Adult Learning Services has had an interest in including deaf learners in our classes for some years now. We made a start in 2013 with an introduction to British Sign Language course, which we ran as part of our family learning provision in Morningside Children's Centre. And this was really popular. It highlighted to us a real significant need. And there are about um, 80 parents in Hackney who have got deaf children and approximately 500 residents in the borough who are registered with the council who are deaf. So based on this need, we applied for funding from the Equality Challenge Unit for this project, which, uh, which we launched in January this year. The aim of the project was to train 10 deaf awareness ambassadors in British Sign Language Level 1 and for them to recruit and support deaf and hearing learners in the classroom in a range of classes. I'm godmother to a four-year-old um, uh, deaf child. He, he can actually speak, he can hear with hearing aids and we've done an introduction to sign language before. And so when we heard about this course, it was just another way to sort of understand sign language more. And then I like the idea of going out into the community and, and using it to engage with other people as well. I've done a lot of sort of volunteer work in the past, mainly sports based, but I quite like sort of going out and meeting people as well. I have a four year old, my son, as well as my son. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, he's, he's, he talks orally. I got him into an oral school, but um, BSL sort of is something that I want to do as well because for him to integrate with all deaf people, certain deaf people refuse to speak, will only do sign language, there's other deaf people that refuse to wear hearing aids or get cochlear implants because they believe that they were born this way so they shouldn't enhance it in any way. Um, so for him, he, if he wants to sort of meet all types of deaf people, he's going to need to do the sign language as well. A lot of information is still there from the, from the beginners course that we did and it's all just sort of coming back. But I think as, as long as I've got sign language, the basics down, then I'm quite, I, like, I like sort of helping people and but I think that the foundation needs to be there first. Um, I was curious about BSL. I was planning to take up a course anyway, and then the opportunity arose to try and help in the community, so I thought I'd give it a go. I wouldn't say I'm confident at the moment. I've only done my class so far, but I'm, I'm hoping by the end of the course I can really assist and help. I really want to get fully, you know, fully up on the side name, because I am the treasurer for the Hackney Deaf Children Society. Um, all our children are oral speaking at the moment, we've just sort of started to launch it, starting to do events, so later on we want to start getting more and more people and then there will be signing people at that point as well, so it'd be nice to be able to do it, rather than paying for an interpreter to come along to our events, which mm -hmm. takes our funding away from mm -hmm. us as well. There are going to be a lot of issues that we, you wouldn't probably expect people to have with, um, with deafness, so I'm interested in seeing how we're going to overcome them and generally how to communicate more clearly with them, um, especially relating to the subjects, whether that's pottery or sewing or cooking. So that's what I'm looking forward to learning. Yeah. I think it's really easy to look at something from the outside and say people need to learn this or people need to learn that, but until you've met different people in the community and see what their needs, seeing what their needs are and what their sort of day-to-day -day issues are, you can't really prioritise. And so I think it's going to be quite interesting to to realise what they are and then set something in motion to sort of help deal with everything and realise different people's skills and what everyone can bring to the table. I'm an architecture student at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that I can kind of cloud the middleman in terms of the interpreter and actually give people like a more direct service. Um, everyone needs housing or you know, a building to be designed so if I can get a full understanding of the client and what they need this would be perfect. Yeah, I'd quite like to either to maybe do something with sport or with music. So when I've played in football teams before, for example, we've played a deaf team and it's been really interesting to play a team that can't hear, but they just ran us ragged because they were so aware of, of where we were on the pitch. So I think to maybe to go out and to use this to then do something with music or with sport, I think I'd be quite interested in doing. So it's just, I guess it's just opened up a whole, a whole yeah. new world. I sort of feel like we're just on the periphery of really. BSL really is um, where hearing people speak is a spoken language. Ours is a sign language, so it's exactly the same as English speaking. So, it, so Americans they speak American, but they have ASL as their own language. The French have FSL. I mean, everybody uses sign language in our community, but we write English, but um, sign language is completely different.
It takes about 34 to 36 weeks, and then you get a certificate for level one. But that is very basic. But you can communicate basically with deaf people. But at first, it's very difficult for them all to come in, and, but they've improved. Level one, you can't really communicate with a deaf person on an extensive level. So, I mean, like, when you learn English and you, you, you have somebody that can't speak English, I mean, you wouldn't accept that. So, I mean, it's exactly the same with a deaf person. So, it needs to be a higher level. I mean, it's going to take quite a while. It's a big, long path. I mean, deaf and hearing people just can't just merge. Not quickly. Um, maybe working together as a team, yeah, it will improve that. Yeah, having a visual aid, obviously, is fantastic, but communication. But if you're showing them, yeah, fine, absolutely. That's, that's fine as a merger. Brilliant idea. But some deaf people love to do pottery. They love to do sewing. I mean, that's access for them, so it is important. Really, really exciting, actually, just the amount of stuff you walk away learning each... I mean, as well as the stuff we learn, sort of, we have the lesson plan set out, and as well as that, there are so many other signs that people typically say, how do you say this, how do you say that? By sort of engaging constantly, and we always stand up and give examples, and you're constantly learning, and so you help each other with your learning, because it's not something you can just get a piece of paper and walk away and revise. You have to sort of act it all out, so... Because we're all engaging all the time in class, it really sticks in your head. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I've done an introduction to BSL before and that was very basic and this is just sort of taking it up a notch but I feel a lot more confident with the level one than I did with just with the sort of the basic so it can only go up. We've done loads of role playing here and if you don't know the sign for them like last week we learned to just sort of ad lib a bit if I didn't know the specific sign for a term just to sort of basically just act out the process and then it's a pretty universal thing and people can understand what you're talking about. It's almost like they're over there and we're over here and so you're sort of you're aware that there are groups of deaf people doing things but it all just seems quite insular. There are deaf adults in Hackney and then but there'll also be a lot of kids in Hackney that are deaf that have deaf parents and so that might be another way of targeting people. I mean we have sort of targeted certain groups and I think when we've had our first session and we see who turns up to the cookery thing then we'll, we'll find out how successful it was or but people there might have an idea of where else to sort of because you have an idea of what you're going to do, but unless you meet someone and they say, right, okay, this is your target, or these people meet up here on a Tuesday, go and speak to them, I think that'll give us a better insight. It's, it's, it's been fun. The um, June's a great teacher. Um, week by week, just learning um, new terms. Um, I feel like I can have a general chit chat with a deaf person if I needed to, just about get by. Um, I wouldn't say I'm fluent, but um, getting there is good. We've had six months to run the project. So it's been fast work, but I'm glad to say we've, we've achieved some great results. And we've managed to run four different community learning classes with four of our training providers. Forest Road Youth Hub hosted Sewing for All, which was run by Creative Lifestyles. Morningside Children's Centre hosted Pottery, which was run by Tato Ceramics. Peter Bedford Housing Association delivered Healthy Eating on a Budget. And Hackney Training Enterprise Associates delivered Cake Decorating. Overall, in these classes, we've engaged about 24 learners, and in each class has been a mix of deaf and hearing learners, with some classes, for example, the pottery having as many as four deaf or hard of hearing learners in the class, so that's been a real success. It's been good because uh, this is, uh, for me, it's like a pilot, working with uh, deaf people and uh, uh, hearing people, hearing to hear people, and uh, it is it's because uh, we've got uh, the volunteers that help us in terms of interpreting it. Well, because poetry is very visual art form and uh, it's quite easy in that way and it's tactile in a way so they quite enjoy it and I think it's been popular because they come week in week out they are looking forward to come to it so it's been very good on, on that note and um, it's, it's the, the work they produce is actually speak for itself they really enjoyed it and it's a good quality work I think it's, it's been interesting from my point of view as a teacher and uh, at the end of it they can just actually produce something. The outcome is, I'm more in, in, interested in the outcome and the outcome has been, that issue has been very good. When I first found out that it was going to be mixed classes of hearing students and deaf students, I was like, how is this going to work? But it's actually worked really well. There's good interaction in the class and we're able to help Tunde to communicate with the non-hearing students. So it's been really good. The two deaf ladies that I'm working with, they're great. They're, they're really um, outgoing um, and they're patient.
which is which is nice. Um, I'm not sure if that's based on the fact that most people probably don't know sign language, so the fact that I'm making an attempt, they're also making an effort to kind of meet me halfway, and that's really supportive. I definitely feel like I've learned quite a bit. Um, I know a few of the people on the course actually have children that suffer from um, hearing impediments, so they're able to kind of interact with their kids and that in itself helps them practice, um, whereas I'm not I'm not in that situation, so to kind of keep my skills fresh, I am having to kind of relate to the books or even go on YouTube to try and freshen up my skills as well. So. The main challenge which we anticipated all along was how to integrate the learners without having a BSL interpreter or a communication support worker in every single class. Because what we didn't want to do was to pilot a model that was not financially sustainable. We did have the Deaf Awareness Ambassadors to support with basic exchanges and we were able to fund interpreters at the beginning and the end of the courses. But this is um, a challenge we're working on in terms of how to take the programme forward. I like the painting, I like the painting, I find it really interesting, I'm really happy and I really enjoy it and I'd like to do more and more and more. It's the first time. I've never done anything like that before. When I arrived, it was the first time. When I looked, I thought, oh, how am I going to do that? And then as time went on, I got quite good at it and I understood. So once it's finished, if we don't do it, if I'm not able to do it again, I'll be quite sad because I'd like to do more of it. I really do. I really like it. They're all nice people. I really like them. And there's some deaf people there as well who are quite interested in what we're doing. So I've enjoyed it. And they've, been, they've looked at what I've done and liked it. So I've been, and vice versa, so I've really enjoyed it. It's made me really happy. It's been interesting seeing that there's people who are hearing and we've just tried to communicate using gesture. But it doesn't matter that there's deaf and hearing. It doesn't matter. It was Deaf Plus. They gave me an information sheet and uh, there were th different things that we could do on there. So like my cake making, stitch sewing and pottery. So I thought, okay, I'll just give it a try. I've gone to Deaf Clubs re fairly regularly, but a lot of them have closed down or, you know, and they don't usually have things like art or pottery. So it's the first time I've come to something like this, I found it really, really interesting. I was able to focus and concentrate on the pottery using my hands. I really enjoyed it. And then I saw a couple of other deaf people here as well. There were some hearing people in the group too. Um, they're interested in learning signs, so they'll say hello, good morning, and borrowing things and using things. We, we've been able to show respect to each other to each other and I think we've worked really well as a group so you know sometimes it's always deaf people in their own group and hearing people in their own group so it's been really nice to be amongst deaf and hearing people and for us to all mix it's been very very good so thank you I think hopefully in the future that it will carry on running again because I because with a lot of deaf people they tend to stay home so it's really good for them to get out of being isolated and mix with other people and do things like sewing and cake making and pottery, etc. I think they'll enjoy it. With BSL, I'm good at BSL, but my English isn't very great. So some of the things that I might not understand when it comes to communication, it might be quite difficult for me. So writing English fluently, you know, it's difficult. Lip reading is quite difficult. I, so I wish and I hope that there's an interpreter there all the time because that would make it things much more comfortable and for me to be able to understand things better. Often, if you have to write things down, sometimes there can be mistakes without an interpreter. So I think it's important to have an interpreter to be able to explain and clarify so that you understand what's being said. I think that's better. I mean, I'd feel much more comfortable with that. This is week three of the project. Um, the class is going really great. By week two, we had 11 students in the room. So it's going really, really well. Um, the students are enthusiastic and they're producing some lovely cake designs in the room. It's great. It's a, big, it's a fantastic project. They've integrated so well, it's hardly made a difference at all. It's been great. It's more the practical aspect about changing the room around and being more aware of my speaking a bit slower, the eye contact. Last week we had an interpreter come in, professional interpreter, but this week we don't have that. But the ambassadors are coping well, and the deaf student Claudette is doing amazing in there. So we're all helping 
we're all getting our signs and even some of our tutors have learnt a bit of sign language as well. We do fashion here as well and we do the baking. A lot of the students are interested in the baking. Now they can decorate the cakes, they want to learn how to make the cakes. That's another project we can work on and we'd like to do in the future. It's not a problem. It's, yes, it's, I've really enjoyed it a lot. Okay. I've been four times. I learned how to cake do cake decoration, uh, how to mix the icing and minutes. everything. It's a new uh, experience for me to learn this. Uh, Building my skills and slowly improving. Rolling. And we've learned mo rolling and then adding colours to blend the colours to make orange and purple and different mixes of primary colours and how to make flowers and even a house and various things like that. It's been really good. Lots of people are checking that I'm enjoying myself and if I'm okay through the course, which is nice. And um, the other people in the class, I've understood them well and communicated with them very well. Um, there are some words that I feel are a bit difficult for me that I'm not confident to sort of understand. But as I've gone through I've understood more and more. You know I can't change my life and and make myself have more English skills. But sometimes I'll just smile and, you know smile through the mistakes that I make or any breakdown of communication and just live with it really. Well, well, cake. I want to learn more about cake. cake making and decorating right. cakes That's good. because I felt cake. that was really good you know, experience the for me decorating the cake. cake but I'd like to actually make the cakes as well carrot cakes and chocolates and vanilla and all the different I need, I need to know how to make the base that. really now uh, I know how to decorate uh, them uh, <laughs> you know I feel that I'd love to quickly learn how to make the cakes <laughs>
Bad different clothes and different foods, so yeah. <laughs> The Sewing for All project, which we Creative Lifestyle CIC have been doing, it's been a real eye-opener for me personally um, and as an organisation because we've had an opportunity to work with people who we possibly wouldn't have um, and it's about amalgamating together people who also probably wouldn't come across each other in their normal life. So um, it's been really good. Um, it's been a, a real challenge as well in some aspects. But um, also it's made me think about the accessibility of our own courses that we run. Um, so I would like to try and find a way to learn more about BSL um, because it is a whole new language on top of what I already know. Um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing that. Um, and so far the project's been going really well. Everybody's been enjoying it. I mean, we've got a mixture of women, and men, hearing and non-hearing people, um, people who can hear a little bit, people who can lip read, people who don't. Um, so it's been really good from that aspect. Our um, ambassador, Leonora, she's, she's really good because I mean, she also has um, a hearing impediment too. So she kind of knows things from um, that point of view. And also one of our learners who is um, partially deaf. She's also been helping with a little bit of interpretation too. So I'll ask her, oh, how do you say something? And then she will say, you know, this is how you do it. She'll give me a, a sign of how to do that. But uh, there's certain things that you, you just can't interpret. You have to just demonstrate, tell the person, look, look at what I'm doing and then they'll see what you're doing and then um, they will copy and, and you'll observe and you know assess whether they've done it right or not. So I started the course seven weeks ago. Um, so we just brought in material to make a top and I was taught how to measure properly um, and how to sew in the correct way using the machine correctly and how to do the seams and hems. So it's been really enjoyable. Yeah, it's beneficial uh, because hearing people can learn uh, things from me like signing. I have been lip reading the uh, teacher and just picking things up through body language. Uh, but it is building those bridges together and I think that should continue. Yeah, my mum's got an old sewing machine, um, so I hope to carry on uh, practicing uh, what I've learned and to learn from the books um, and just what I've been taught. Hopefully there'll be another course set up again that I, I'd like to come along to. But one thing uh, that I am slightly disappointed in, that hasn't been uh, interpreted throughout the course. It's been a seven week course and I've had an interpreter on the first day and the last day. So I've struggled throughout the course, whereas the other students who have been hearing have uh, been able to take on the information and I've been struggling all the way through it. So okay. there should have been an interpreter throughout the course. I just um, that the course will carry on. Uh, I'd like to do another sewing course. All the courses should be a little bit longer, it should be about uh, 10 weeks. Uh, just because you feel like you've taken on, you've learnt uh, the basics, but you want to extend on that. But without an interpreter, uh, it's impossible, um, and that should be thought about. It's been a good course, we've had a good teacher. Um, I've actually learnt a lot, and I feel like I've helped a lot as well, so it's been good. Level 1 BSL has been helpful, um, just in terms of knowing the basics, um, being familiar with colours, um, for example, with painting today. So if someone describes a colour to me, or even think it spells a colour, um, then that has made it a lot easier. And just a general communication barrier, the fact that I'm able to make an effort and communicate with them means I think I think it just makes them more comfortable as deaf people um, in a hearing class. So I think the interaction does work. I don't know if I'd say super confident, but I am interested in um, pursuing maybe level two um, to increase my confidence. I think there's a good structure um, in terms of interpreters, in terms of resources, and I think there's the potential for a lot more interactive classes that can incorporate deaf 
learners and hearing learners just to unify them. I'm no professional um, at VSL and if I'm able to cope then it's definitely something that can happen. Me and pottery, do, I wasn't never really an arty person so I never thought I'd enjoy pottery. I enjoy meeting the people more than I enjoy doing the class. Um, I love talking to them even though you know, obviously they can only sign to us but the group we've got is so friendly and so, I don't know, just mixed, it's lovely. There's a lot of deaf people that feel so isolated in their own world and we found one of them and then they invited all their friends together so yeah, get a bigger class <laughs> basically because you're going to have a lot more deaf people that are going to want to do the pottery because okay. they've seen what they've done and they're going to want to come back. But okay. I think because they've got a good relationship with the ambassadors, well, they don't feel mm. so isolated because they've made friends with us and it's a bit like you've got this extended family going now. Um, I'm actually going on to further study. I'm going into Hackney Community College doing my level two because I want to work with disabled deaf people, like people who've got my condition but who are deaf at the same time. I think I've got a lot more confident because I've got a spine disease so I'm always a bit, I can be a bit shy and I feel very like isolated sometimes but here it's given me a lot more confidence because in your BSL you've got to come forward to the class. I don't like speaking in front of people, I hate being like the centre of attention, but it's made you come out of your shell a little bit. And especially coming here, you see the way people act, it's totally different, you have to come out of your shell. I've really enjoyed the sort of the whole experience of learning. To be taught a language by a deaf person and for humour to come across and jokes to be made and stuff, I think there's something really special about it. And then to see it put in progress when you see interpreters and stuff at the cookery, brings it all together, I think it's quite, yeah. quite exciting. It's good watching the interpreters because you're seeing it sort of flow a lot more than what you would in our classroom as such. And a lot of things with sign language, I guess, are, they are they're quite sort of practical, so things like demonstrating cookery techniques and stuff, you, once you see it being demonstrated and translated, you then sort of think, oh, that makes sense, that sign makes sense, because it's obviously just a demonstration of what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, one of the great things was we, we um, one day in class, we did all the fruits and vegetables and that, and it just so happened the next day we were taken to Ridley Road Market. So we all looked <laughs> fantastic. Cauliflower, <laughs> tomato. We knew them all. I feel quite confident. I'd yeah. Say. yeah. Yeah, we've got the basics. So you could sort of go from there with the basics. But no, definitely. I mean, I talk to my son a lot more doing it now. I would feel a lot more confident going out and doing something like this again now, yeah. having, having done this, and would actually quite like to do something like this. Yeah. This has been the beginning of what we hope will be a, an ongoing strand of adult learning services work. We forged links with Hackney Council, their sensory impairment team. We forged links with Deaf Plus and the Royal Association for the Deaf. We've approached several colleges, including City Lit, to work with them on recruiting trainee BSL interpreters and communication support workers who can support our classes in the future to enable deaf learners to fully participate in the classes and this is in response to some of the feedback we've had about not being able to have interpreters um, all the way through. We'll also continue to support deaf awareness ambassadors who want to progress onto level 2 BSL and who want to continue helping out in the classroom. And staff CPD, staff continuing professional development is an important part of the whole endeavour as well and we're going to be working with ambassadors and training providers to develop workshops for other tutors that we have so that we can have accessibility for deaf and hearing learners in a whole range of classes and learning activities. And some of the learners from the pottery class have already managed to progress onto one of Tado's mainstream classes, so that's a really excellent that's a really excellent outcome. Mm -hmm.